Hello, everybody. It is time for another weekly edition of the Weekend Hero. Right now, we're working through my presentation, 10 Tips for Life Efficiency. It is a slideshow that is being turned into a book, so stay tuned for the book. The whole goal of this presentation is to basically help you hit the easy button. As we talked about in our last webinar, the idea is to actually help you take the, the lazy way toward getting more done. And so the focus of everything that we're doing in this is to make you more productive, but in a way that actually makes life easier. Um, so that's what my goal is and any feedback that you have, I'll give you my contact info at the end. I would love to hear any feedback that you have. Typically when I do this series as a live seminar, I do all 10 of them and I challenge people to take just one of the ideas, implement it for 60 days every day. And if they do, and it does not change their life dramatically, I offer up a free $100 Starbucks gift card. I've been doing this talk for over a decade and I have yet to pay out a Starbucks gift card. So either people aren't doing the challenges, which I understand, or the challenges work, which I also understand. So if you wanna take me up on that challenge, I will still, at least as of the time of this recording, if you do one of these challenges for 60 days, and it doesn't work for you, let me know and I will send you a Starbucks gift card. So just a really quick rundown on who I am. I'm a proud Rotarian. I do commercial real estate during the day and on the weekends. I'm a motivational speaker and I'm a full-time husband and dad. A special welcome to the morning heroes who join me either live or on the recordings as weekend heroes. If you haven't heard about the Morning Hero program, please go to themorninghero.com. I do not get paid anything for advertising it, but I have joined this program. A lot of people I know have joined this program, and it is absolutely life-changing. Uh, as I said, I am a husband and dad. I am very proud of this cute little family, especially that little baby girl in there. Oh my gosh, she's the best. So we are doing number 10 this week. Any start is a good start. Um, the most common problem that I hear about when I'm coaching people is that they've got this really awesome idea and they, it's, it's so revolutionary. It, it can help people. Uh, most of the time it's focused on other people, but they just don't have time for it. And they've had it for years, sometimes for decades and they haven't got around to doing it because it's so big. So it might be a teaching course or an invention or a program at church, or you know, there, there's so many things that we wanna do, writing a book, and we never get around to them and we don't know how. So uh, what I wanna do today is basically go step-by-step step through the, the common problems that I run into first, Secondly, the background on why I think or why I see people not having success with those big ideas that they have. And then third, of course, to help you with those, to give you a ridiculously easy solution. It is literally a laughable solution. And I'll explain that when we get to the third part. So as I said, the, the most common problem, first of all, that I hear when I'm coaching is people feeling stuck, people feeling frustrated, people feeling like they're not progressing toward their goals. And the background on this, uh, it, it comes from a lot of the way our society has gotten structured. So as I'm sure you've noticed, we are focus nowadays on being busier and busier and busier. We try to cram more and more in. Take, for example, how we watch TV. We are no longer content with watching one TV show, right? What do we do now when we find a TV show we like? We binge watch. We, we don't just watch one. We have to watch not only a season, but like my wife, she watches the entire series, four, five, six seasons 
in one go or one week. And that's pervasive in everything we do in our life. We book ourselves to the wall, which gives ourselves zero break time, zero rest time, zero time to think, and zero creative time to work on these big ideas. Um, going back, another big idea might be a job change. You might be thinking, you know, I don't love the job I'm in. I'd love to get some education for a new job, or I'd love to start a new job on the side, but I just don't have time. So between having too much to do, the increase, I, I've got a friend, a very good friend, Alicia, who's a naturopathic doctor who talks about, and she is a morning hero, about the increase she's seen in patients with stress and anxiety. And Alicia, I appreciate your feedback on that because it's really helpful to me. Uh, we're seeing so much more of that. And a lot of it has to do with overprogramming, overstimulation, uh, not saying no to things, being on our devices too much. And another topic that we'll talk about in another one of these videos, which is multitasking, trying to do too many things at the same time. So the coaching method that I have for this, when you have a big idea that you want to get on, is that any start is a good start. What that means is a judgment-free release because we try too hard to get all of our ducks in a row. Zig Ziglar, uh, I was very, very lucky to get to intern with him. It was only for a day, but it was amazing. And I've, I've consumed all of his books and his talks voraciously. And he had this really good analogy he would talk about, which was the calendar. And he would say, you know, you might as a parent say, like right now, when we're recording this video, it's November. And you might say, you know, I, I want to get started on my new idea, but it's November. The election just happened. You know what? Let's wait until the holidays. Let's wait until I have some time off of work and then I'll do it. And then, of course, the holidays come and you get busy decorating. You get busy with friends and family. Hopefully this year we'll get to do that. Uh, and you get all that stuff going on. And so it kind of gets pushed and pushed and pushed. And then you hit January and now, now you have to go back to work. So you say, okay, well, I've got to get back to work. So let me just wait until end of January, early February, and then I'll start on my idea. But then once it hits February, you think, okay, I've got a bunch of stuff going on. I'm really busy at work. So let's wait until the spring, you know, spring break time, and, and then I'll get started. And then spring break comes. And all of a sudden, you know, you're really busy with the kids their home, you're trying to plan vacations. So you say, okay, well, you know, we're really close to the end of the school year. Let's just wait until the kids get out and I've got, you know, baseball to go to and all the kids stuff. So let's just wait until the kids are out of school. And then summer hits. Well, now all of a sudden it's summer and it's hot and you want to get out. You want to go and travel. You want to go on vacation. So the summer goes by and you don't get to your idea. And then, oh my gosh, well, summer went by. I didn't get it done. And now it's the fall and the kids are going back to school. So I have to get prepared for that. I can't really get anything done right now, but let's get the kids back to school and let's get back into the, the work year. And then the work year starts and it's September, October. All of a sudden it's November again, and you've gone a whole year pushing it off. And I love that analogy because that's what we all do. We all wait so long to line up our ducks instead of just jumping in and doing it. So what I want to encourage you right now is whatever that big thing is you've worked on, do it now. Start today. Literally, as soon as you stop watching this video, make your first step. So let's now go to the final part and talk about how you do this. How do you implement any start is a good start? And I'll talk about some specific examples. So let's say that you want to write a book. Uh, Zig Ziglar told me when I was with him that every person has a book in them. And I thought that was so inspiring. And he said, the best thing you can give to other people is hope, which just, it was amazing. So he said, if you have a book in you, you need to write it because somebody needs to read it. But writing a book is huge. If you've ever picked up someone's book and seen how polished it is, you've probably thought, oh my gosh, I could never do this. Look how nice this is. It's format and all that. And so you never get started. One of my good friends who just also happens to be a morning hero is a guy named Valley Coleman. And Valley has this 
amazing, incredible book idea, but he's just like the rest of us, especially because he's so focused on the Morning Hero program. He says, you know what, Rick, I've got to stay focused on my big tasks right now. I don't have time. I'm going to start the book later. And this is the challenge I gave to him and I give to you. If your idea is a book, as soon as this is over, open a Word document or a Google Doc or whatever you use and create the title page. That's all you have to do. It will literally take you 30 seconds to a minute. Don't even worry about having a good book title. My book title for this presentation right now is called 10 Tips for Life Efficiency. I don't think that's a good book title, but I'm not going to worry about it. So I literally, the first thing I did was open up a Google Doc, wrote 10 Tips for Life Efficiency by Rick Chatham, saved it, and closed it. That's it. That's all you have to do. Any start is a good start. You did your first step. Now let's get into the why. Remember earlier I said there's this is laughably easy. So the why of this is going to be, it, it goes back to an 80s movie called What About Bob? And this is a stupid, silly, funny film, but in it, the main character, Bob, has terrible anxiety, and his therapist tells him, take baby steps, literally, to go to the elevator. Think about it one step at a time. And I love this analogy because if you're writing a book, that's what you're going to do. You're going to do baby steps. All I have to do is create a title page. The next day, I'm just going to start my outline for my chapters. I'm not even going to finish it. I'm just going to start some chapter ideas. And it might take you weeks just to get those in. Or you might just put in some random notes. If you saw my the, the state that the book is for this seminar right now, it's unreadable. I went through uh, for 10 days and each day I put in quotes for each chapter, I just copied quotes over from the internet. So it took about two minutes and found quotes on that chapter and put them in. And then I went through 10 days of finding book recommendations for each chapter, just two to five minute bites. And you will find that you can do two to five minute bites without getting stressed out. And then all of a sudden, yeah, it's gonna take you months or years, but you're going to get that book done and quit procrastinating. So that's the idea for a book. Let's talk about another tool that you can use. This is a, a tool that I created under my, no, my own brand called Pursue Your Vision. And this is the marble jar. I call it Dropping Your Marbles. And I actually wrote a book called Drop Your Marbles. The way this works is you get the jar and the bag of marbles. And you can set this up yourself, or if you want to get one from me, just contact me. And that jar represents your big idea. And every time you take a baby step, you're going to take one of the marbles and drop it in the jar. And I can't describe to you why, but there's something so satisfying about that plink of dropping the marble. It's, it's physical. It's audible, and just hearing that clink in the glass just gives us this kind of um, bow onto accomplishing something, and it gives you really good neural feedback. Plus, even though, like for example, you're working on your book, even though you don't have the physical book to see that it's done, you keep this jar on your desk or somewhere, and you can look at it and see, oh, the jar is starting to get filled up, and Trust me, by the time you get this jar full, if you don't have your project done, you're going to be so close to done that you're going to be flying. So I highly recommend either doing this yourself. You can do it, of course, with pennies or something else. Uh, do a, a makeshift one or contact me and get one of these. I sell them at cost, and they're a really great, great tool for doing the baby steps. Another final great way to do any start as a good start is don't even start your project. Just today, right now, pull out a sheet of paper and make a list of the things you need to start your project. So let's say it's an invention. What tools or resources are you going to need? Will you need a blowtorch? Will you need 
to do some welding, a TIG welder? Will you need a workbench? Do you need to go to Home Depot and get some tools? If it's a new job, what kind of training do you need? Who are people you can contact? Uh, that's actually a really good way to do any start as a good start is to send a text or an email or call someone and say, hey, you've already done this in two minutes. What advice can you give me? The biggest takeaway though is that don't judge yourself on the start. Just go out and do it. Do the smallest possible thing that you can. Start today and then take those tiny bite size, non-stressful steps. I literally have had times where I've opened up my book and just reread a paragraph and corrected the grammar in it. And that was all I did for the day. It took about 30 seconds, but I'm making daily progress. All right, hopefully I pounded that. I beat the horse till it was dead. Thank you so much for either joining me live or watching this video later. These videos come out weekly. If you want to watch live, these happen at 6 a.m. every Saturday. Contact me for the link here. And I always finish with a thank you, not just from me, but from my adorable baby, Regan. I need to update this picture because it's about six months old, but she's so dang cute. All right, thanks so much for joining me, and we will talk to you next week.